going live. Going live. Uh, we're live. Oh, there it goes. I was like, uh, it's all Are tired. we live? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello. We are in the garage. So yep. I got smart and bought a 100 foot ether cable and ran it out the house into the garage because, yeah. Oh, can you read it from there? It's hard. But it's a little yeah, no, it's easier to read obviously on a big screen, but we have the we have the proper background yeah. now, I suppose. Well I really wanted to get the 430 in here because I was like, oh that's cool. We're uh, a two Ferrari household again. <laughs> She's not real pleased with that. Yeah, no, I lost my uh I lost my parking space. Who's stressed out right now? Can I validate anybody? Yes. This this is causing lots of problems in the world right now. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Who's had a rough couple of weeks? Let me validate you. You know, like I will say, like I don't want, you know, I'm in healthcare, not the type of healthcare where you're in an ER and people are coughing oh, in your face, you know. Tim's there. Oh, hey Tim. Hey. Talk about essential people. But uh like I'm out and about, I am a mental health care professional and stuff's real right now, man. It's hard to it's hard learning new ways, unprecedented every day to get people's needs met. Man, it is stressful. Nothing. I'm ha what is it? I think it's like change fatigue, change fatigue. Everything's it's, it's the uncertainty. It's the uncertainty. It's the unprecedented nature of everything. It's like making 10,000 decisions a day. Cause you know, I, I have employees and I, I very much want to do right by them every day and provide good information, but th there are so many unknowns. Yeah. And so, and let me tip my hat to my neighbor, Rachel, who is probably on the stream and she's at home with two tiny little boys. If Rachel were to come outside and yell really loud, we would probably yeah. hear it. Yeah. Cause so, we're in the garage. Um, and Rachel is. Kevin said, as Meg comes home from work and says, damn it, Dan, there's another red Ferrari in my parking spot. No kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, like I can't even, like, I don't have the energy to fight him on the car stuff right now. I Sorry. just don't. Um, but hey, the good news is this is a temporary, it's a known temporary, and it's probably gonna make money. Yeah. Hi from Canada. Hi from Orlando. Orlando. By the way, I'm not drinking wine tonight. I'm actually drinking a local brewery's thank beer. Thank you, Mousetrap. Oh, thank you, Mousetrap. Because uh, we wanted to support local companies right now since everything's all messed up. And this is our favorite restaurant in Austin. And they we tried our best to support them and they still had to close. And so- Hopefully temporarily. Hopefully only temporary. But so right before they closed, I went and bought 12 crawlers. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't, I'm not gonna get any of their beer for like months. So I quickly bought a bunch of beer. Mo is right here. Oh yeah. He's Mo's, laying on the garage floor. I can, like, from here. can you, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Mo. There's Mo. He's like scratchy. Yep. There we go. <laughs> That's good beer. Hi from New Orleans. Oh my God. You oh. guys have got this. Like, hope okay. You are, hope you guys are uh, avoiding this. Yeah. So. New Orleans. My, like, I'm sorry, guys. You have it like as bad as, maybe not as bad as New York, but you guys are getting it bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is Detroit. Yeah. Detroit is ramping up to be awful. Oh, no, Mo, no, Mo's wandering around. Have I been out to Jester King Brewery? No, not yet. I, I mean, uh, no, I haven't. Um, I'm not a, like I'm not a big beer aficionado. Like, I drink all the wussy beers. If you notice, this is a very light beer. This is northern. Uh, this is their northern light, north by north north by northwest northern light. It's like their lightest. Sissy's Somebody beer. asked if I was glowing, and I really feel the opposite of incandescent right now. <laughs> I've had three weeks of work the last three weeks where... There's, there's Mo. Yeah, there's Mo. Um, Jacksonville, Florida. All my Mexican, Mexican beer was quarantined for real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, someone asked if you're going to change the oil in the 430. No. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a... That's a that's a one-time deal. I don't think it's any more interesting for me to do it on the 430 than it was on the 458. And the novelty of it was very fun for some of you. And I'm glad for that. 
Um, I don't think it'll be more interesting. <laughs> I think it'll be less interesting to see me. Although the 430's got that drain plug that's like uh, yeah. the, the like dumps 10 quarts of oil in a half a second drain plug. What car would I like Meg to review one day? Anything. I mean, I I think I wanted to review David's 488 because I think it'd be a similar review to the Mc, McLaren she drove because it's oh Bianca fast. Bianca oh. hey hey Bianca we're sorry about your job Bianca I'm sorry about that I don't know if she wants it blasted on a live stream but we are sorry well it's I mean lots of people are laid off well, I six point six million this I know week. it's not a secret but I sorry okay if I... yeah hi from Sydney hey Sydney how are you <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, no, the Australians. Oh, someone. Yeah. By the way, just so you know, like YouTube's really strict about swearing in the in feed. the live streams. Yeah. The someone live from streams. Seattle, though, you guys talk about people who have it bad. Washington has it bad right now. Austin doesn't is not near where Washington or New York is right now, but they are in the process of shutting everything down, consolidating everything, stopping everything, limiting things. Someone asked, when will there be another Texas supercar rally? As soon as this is over? Yeah. I mean, there's there. I'm still scheduled to go on a Ferrari thing in May, in early May. Who knows if that's still going to happen? That's the next thing that I have planned outside of the house. I mean, and who knows? They. I mean, we'll see, right? We'll see. Hi from Spain. Spain. Oh, I want to be quarantined in Spain. Oh, it's be like that's so much better. It's like one or two a.m. It right probably there? is loud. Meg review a nine eleven S. Sure. Is that automatic? Sure. Negative twenty four in Canada today. Oh hell no. Which part of Canada? Dude. So Canada's a big place. Dude, that's cold as hell. Hi from DC, Romaine and Axel. He was. He he falling as I don't know what that means. Was he falling asleep? Uh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan yeah, is a more remote. Saskatchewan has a catchy name though. Uh, since buying the 430, what type of insurance did I have to buy? I just put it on my USA policy. Just you know, it's a little weird. Like you can't do it through the app. Like I tried to do it through the app, and it was like mm, you got to call us. And so I called them, and they're like, okay. Done and added the car. Do you like Houston or Dallas? You would know the answer to that. Do you like Houston or Dallas more for super oh, culture? Thanks, Mousetrap. Mousetrap, thank you, sweetheart. I mean, I don't know which one. I don't know the Dallas supercar culture as well as the Houston one. Houston is very much about drag racing. Is Houston like LA is the sense I get? It's got a lot of street racing. Yeah. So... I kind of like Houston more, I guess, but I've probably been to Houston more for car stuff than the Dallas. I've only been to like one or two events in Dallas. Although when you went to Dallas, what I was told is you got a very sweet reception. Yeah, no, very, very nice people in Dallas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They're both totally different cities. So Didn't the, the Houston Cars and Coffee, even before COVID, get shut down? Yeah. Was, Isn't that what you guys were saying? Yeah, it got out of control. Why did it get shut down? People were being lunatics and like doing burnouts and donuts and crazy, crazy crap. In like streets and stuff. Like on the street, yeah. Yeah, that's like LA. Those crazy videos I see from LA. Yeah. And that's really that's not Dan's vibe. No. Like. No, I'm not like a big like, hey, let's go out and get arrested kind of guy, as you. Yeah. As you can tell. Um, interesting. What would you each buy with a one million dollar budget? What car would we buy? With a million dollar. Oh, budget. Stu is here. Hey, Stu. Oh, hello from Ann Arbor. Go blue. Go blue. Yeah. You know, I went to the University of Michigan for a while. Probably that's why he's saying it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what? Million bucks. Eh, you might be able to buy an F40 for a million bucks if you found a crappy one. <laughs> that, that would be a consideration for sure. Uh,. How does he get the live feed to work in the garage? I dragged a hundred foot Ethernet cable out the house, out the front door, <laughs> into the into the garage. So that's how I did it. Yeah. It's, it's connected. I couldn't get the wireless to 
to go through all the walls. Well, people want to know why the cop showed up the other day. Oh, the cop? Yeah. <laughs> he actually was interested in buying the 430. A police officer came to look at the 430. Yeah, he's and a really, really nice guy. Yeah. All identities will remain anonymous, but uh, there are several police officers who are good friends of the channel. Yeah. So it's funny that Dan's top videos are these very dramatic videos with these uh, few yeah. random police. But yeah, no, we've got more than a few police officer friends of the channel. Which I always laugh on the police videos when someone's like, Police, police, you know, the cops can't afford a Ferrari. And I'm like, well, I actually know two that have, have them. them. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, you know, not really true. Mo needs crunchy. Oh, he needs like a snack. Well, he's laying on my feet. Right he had now. a big dinner. He's tired. Yeah. <laughs> Stu's going to give us the coronavirus after his Vegas trip. No kidding, Stu. No, he was the last one who got us sick. What was it? In like December? Oh, yeah. We were sick. On Christmas because of you and yeah. coming over and installing your seatbelts, brah. Don't give me coronavirus. Wait, is did Stu just say he's going to Vegas right no, now? He came back. He had to visit his parents. Okay, that's different. Yeah, it, like, was, it was like quickly get okay. a, get a trip into Vegas. <laughs> okay, okay. His parents. parents are one thing. Yeah, I get it. <clears throat> uh man. Generally speaking, what income would you recommend for a supercar lifestyle? Depends on the supercar. <laughs> I suppose that's true. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's a big difference between buying a $300,000 supercar and a $100,000 supercar and a $50,000 supercar. Like, you know, a $50,000 supercar is like buying an expensive SUV right now. Well, I think like that goes back to what how people operationalize the term supercar, right? Sure. And you don't want my answer to that question. It's like, I don't care. It's all. It, like you guys know, I would never buy one of these cars. I'm sitting in a garage with two of them. Uh, so no, nobody, nobody should have one. How about that? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a long three weeks of work. Is a Porsche 928 a supercar? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that too many Porsches qualify as supercars by most people's lexicon because like they consider them like sports car. But I don't know. I, I'm pretty broad with the term. Oh, here's what Megan's drinking tonight. I'm drinking a Bernello, which is very good. Not quite as good as a Barolo, but quite good. Does Austin have a good amount of supercars compared to a city like L.A. or Miami? Not not near L.A.? LA. No. no. I mean, but it has a lot. It has a lot for the size of the city. Like, comparable size cities don't have this many supercars. I think it's just a lot of... It's a really... There's a, there's a lot of wealth in Austin. Right now, especially, it's a, you know, very robust economy. And whenever there's... What? Adam, Porsche greater than Ferrari. Shut your mouth, Dan. Shut your mouth. <laughs> That's funny. Uh... I came in late. Is the F four is the F four thirty the project car? Yes, right there. That is the project car. It's pretty nice. In fact, here, hold on. Right, wait, ready. People want to see it. Right there. Whoa. Project car. Yes. And then my there's my rims without tires still. As yeah. You can, as you can see. Well, oh. let's not show my bald spot. Let's just show yeah, the yeah, car. Yeah. But oh, show Mo. Mo. Oh, yeah, Mo. Hi, Mo. Hi, Mo. <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, What's the real estate market like here? Good. I mean, expensive. are you a buyer or a seller? Yeah, um, expensive. Would oh. you invest a million in great wine? No. No. No, I would not. I'd probably drink too much of it. <laughs> nice backdrop, yeah. What age do I recommend replacing tires? Anything over five years, get rid of. You should not have tires more than five years. How much do headers change the sound on a 360? A lot. Is the change volume or tone also? It's both. It's both. If you want high pitch on any of these Ferraris from like the 360 on up, you need an X pipe if you want it to be high pitch. Anything other than an X pipe doesn't make them have high pitch. Simple as that. Scudder 4 of 8 around the same price. 4 of 8 for sure. I need to be rocking a normal guy. This is a normal guy. Look at it. See? Normal guy. That's very normal guy. That is my logo. Am I missing my Corvette? No. In fact, I still own it. I, need to... <laughs> <sighs> I wish the damn thing would sell. So why? So, at least it's not at my house anymore. Tell you what. Any of you want a Corvette, 33 grand, it's yours. 
There you go. I'm just I just need it gone. I'll take a loss on it. Uh, yes. Time for Chris, Richard, and Stu Dog and Dan and many other men to dress up in our red Mario Ferrari onesies and wrench on that 430. No, we can't gather right now. It's irresponsible, guys. Don't have a bunch of you over here. It's not good. Do I miss my first Ferrari? I mean, you know, only because of nostalgia. Not, You know, I like the 458 a lot more than my 430. In fact, actually having this 430 reminds me of how much more I like the 458 than the 430. Not that this is a bad car. It's an amazing car. It's just I prefer the 458. That's just me, like my... Personal preference. I'm looking at like how I was like, wow, the 430 is really low, but I forgot that his 458 is on quick jacks because yeah. because coronavirus uh, really slowed down the tire market globally. Well, um, they basically, so I was talking to the tire guy and he said they basically just shut off production of sports car tires. Which is a good idea when you need to make ventilators. So like getting sports car tires right now is really tricky. Um, what else is there? 48 Pista dealers asking 45 by 85 over list? Dude. Oh, on a Pista. Oh, well, yeah, I can see that. Oh. Oh, Tim. I don't know why. Did someone just ask if a Hummer is a supercar? Is that a. No. Hummer, Hummer H1 supercar? Like what? I don't even know what the Hummer. They're the asking SUV? you. If that qualifies? No. It's an SUV. Uh, no. Who Dear knows? God, no. I hate SUVs. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. Why Ferraris? What caused your passion for Ferrari? I don't know. I, I wasn't one of those people that always dreamed of a Ferrari. And it just kind of happened. And once I got one, I really liked them. And it was like, I don't know. I just felt like this was... This was the car that I wanted, and I didn't, like, you know, like, uh, prior to that, every time I bought a car, I'd be like, ah, I can't wait to get the next one, or I want something a little better, a little better. And when I got the Ferrari, I was like, I'm happy. I don't need something else. This is good. <laughs> uh, you what? Ferraris are crap? Well, they're talking on this channel. <laughs> okay. It's like that one time Dan did the mean, the mean comments like uh episode and one of the guys comments is like man i'm really getting sick of this guy in his ferrari yeah like, why are you what? watching what? What's going on? what the hell meg suggestions for dealing with oh anxiety. loafer is here hey loafer, loafer. yep sure. and travis uh did oh, they Carpenter. say did someone say suggestions for anxiety yeah i'm gonna turn you mean right now related to covid well if it's related to the covid stuff and, you, and you're a person who finds yourself kind of ruminating about all the COVID stuff, I would recommend you limit yourself to one new source a day and then limit yourself to checking that one new source a day so you aren't binging on all media related to COVID and choose a legitimate source of information like the CDC or I don't know, anything, I guess, <laughs> I guess legitimate is probably dependent on the person though. Uh, so choose something that's a good, credible source of information. Choose one source of information, allow yourself to check it once a day. Do go. not go from news outlet to news outlet, reading different things. It's, just, down the rabbit hole. it's not healthy to do that to yourself. There's some people who are unbothered by it, but if you're anxious about it, limit that amount of social media and news that you're digesting or exposing yourself to. Loper is asking, when are my tires coming in? Supposedly tomorrow. Hopefully. Uh, is the 430 faded? No. They actually look basically the same color. It's just the angles and whatever. And also this one has a different the 458 has a different PPF than the PPF on this car. Uh, oh, we got. Sorry, I'm reading stuff. Yeah, we're trying to read stuff. And people are disputing my advice about anxiety. But I'm not talking about necessarily the purpose of, uh, uh, of limiting to one source is for folks 
who can't in a healthy way digest that much information, which is often uh, catastrophic and sensationalistic. This isn't about trying to write a thesis on coronavirus. People who are extremely anxious about it really need to limit the amount of that they're exposing themselves to. Porter. Oh, it's Porter. Yay. Now comes the time. Porter uh, Chuddley is the handle. C-H-U-T-T-L-E-L-Y has his own Facebook channel. And he just, YouTube. excuse me, YouTube channel. Porter in his, his YouTube channel, Chuddley, is all about trains. If you're a rail fan, you will dig it. And he just monetized. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. He just started making money. Yes, he did. So please give a subscribe to our neighbor Porter, who is uh, Mo's actual dog walker three days a week or more. Uh, the 430 was in Dallas. It was not local to Austin. Am I planning on replacing the fuel pumps in the 430 before selling it? No. Uh, the fuel pumps either work or they don't. So there's no reason to preemptively replace them. They, they just die. Like if you can hear them, you know, like if you hear them, then they're dying, but they're not dying. Uh, I did decide I'm probably going to replace the headers. Did someone say they're from Guyana? Yeah. Hello. Guyana. Holy crap. That's really cool. Welcome. Opinions on full leather or leather slash Alcantara seats. I mean, get what you like. <laughs> I don't know. It's That's personal preference. Someone asked me how I knew you were the one. Because I was... Weirdo. No, I mean, <laughs> that's really for the couple of weeks of work I had, like profound questions, or maybe like I'm not going to give my best answers to them. But, you know, we uh, by the time we got married, we had been together six years. Um, when someone, uh, Dan was smart and he was interesting and he had the same life goals, really, and values, and he treated me extremely well. Um, and yeah, I mean, these were all very solid indicators that he was the one. How does the new 430 compare to my past car pre-mods? This car is in considerably better condition than my 430 was. This car is in extremely good condition. Uh, the paint especially is remarkably good condition. It has better options than my car had. But my car already had aftermarket suspension, aftermarket brakes. It already had test pipe. So, like, you know, take one or the other, right? So this thing's very stock. Well, Rhode Island, help. Oh, somebody just asked you if you have, a like, an hourly on Ferrari search services. Do you price per hour your Ferrari search services? Yeah, I mean, if you want, like, my help, I do cons consultations. It's... Yeah. A lot of people call Dan and do his consultations when they already have a car in mind yeah. and they want validation or, or discount. Yeah, a lot of times people will say, oh, I've got these two or three cars I'm looking at. Which one? Or this yeah. one. I've really become emotionally attached. Oh, thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Can you ballpark what you will sell the 434? Um, no, don't speculate on that right now. Well, I mean, I will tell you. I think it's going to go plus or minus in the $90,000 range. Um, I did talk to my investor today. So just to give you an idea, 17 people have said they want the car, <laughs> which was like, oh, I was not expecting that. I thought maybe like two or three, but 17 people have contacted me and said, I want the car. So we're trying to figure out what's the best way to go about selling it that's fair. At the same time, like I don't want to be like, Hey, let's like have them race to the highest price just so we can, you know, get every last cent. I don't know. What, I don't know what the right solution is. We are leaning towards possibly doing an auction, but at the same time, I'm after my last auction experience, I'm kind of not really enthusiastic about that idea. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. So stay tuned for all that. Oh, thanks Chuck. So less than a ballpark. <laughs> oh yes. I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Haha. Uh -huh. It's financially possible to go for a lesser expensive 4.8 over a really nice clean 430 of first Ferrari. Would you be 
Yeah, I would if I could get a fourth of a and afford that over a four thirty, I would absolutely get They're that. talking about like for your first Ferrari. Well no no no. Like but like the type of four five eight you would get within the four thirty price range. Well yeah. If Is you, there gonna be something really jacked up about that car? Maybe. Probably. Well, one of the one of the cars that someone sent was a, a fourth of eight in Chicago that was like hundred and twenty. It had a lot of miles, but I would probably consider that over a 430, just if it was me. I mean, I'll put it this way. You you have to factor in, if you buy a 430 and you keep it for a while, you're going to end up spending more money on maintenance on the 430 than you are on the 430. A lot. Like, they, these just take more maintenance. So if you bought... You know, similarly, like aged and mild cars, the four five eight is going to take less money after the initial hit than the four four thirty. So I don't know. Oh, so he's asking me when I'm going to review the four thirty. I guess I can. Oh, yeah, you should. I mean, as long as we've got it in the garage. Might as well. Rachel says garage looks good. Hey, Rachel, why don't you come over? Yeah, you can stand like. She always shows up. Our neighbor. Our neighbor always shows up to our live streams, but she never comes over. <laughs> Chug your wine. No! I'm not chugging my wine. That's a good thing. Yeah. Auction it off with reserve. Well, I thought about auctioning it with a starting price that was like basically what we have in the car, so that anything over that we make a profit. That was what I was thinking. So, I don't know. Mike, look. What? They said something's wrong with their. Oh, no. It's Oh no, the mic thing did again. What? Something happened to the mic. All right, we gotta end it and re restart. We're gonna go upstairs. No, I'm just gonna end it. Re